you're curious what IPOs are or what investment banking is or how investment banks make money through an IPO, I got you covered. Stay to the end and I'll share an investment bank you probably haven't heard of, but that has been involved in some of the biggest IPOs and transactions in the tech space. All right, so first of all, what is an IPO? Well, IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. And ultimately what it is, is it's the first time that a company will offer shares of their company on the public markets. Now, one of the things that a lot, that sometimes gets missed in the messaging, but behind an IPO is everybody gets caught up in like, oh, it's a big exit event, or like, hey, they're ringing the bell, or all those things. But at its core, an IPO is a financing event. It's a, play, it's a time when a company raises money from investors in the public markets and their shares become available for public investors to buy and sell and, and trade back and forth. That's the big thing. And by being a public company, it opens up the opportunity to raise money from lots and lots of different investors. In public markets, you don't have to be accredited in order to invest in the company, right? Anybody can open up a Robinhood account and start investing and buying shares of Apple or what have you. That's not as true in the private markets. In the private markets, it's a lot more difficult to invest in these companies and they're, they're less liquid, which means if you want to sell your shares in a public or in a private company, it can be really hard because you got to find another investor that's willing to buy those shares. But on the public markets, you just go on to Robin Hood and say, yeah, I want to sell it for this price. And there are probably lots of buyers that are that are willing to buy it from you. It tends to be a lot more liquid. Let's also talk a little bit about investment bankers. Where do they fit into this whole IPO thing? If you watch my other channels, you know that investment bankers are basically realtors for businesses. Their job is to basically go out, find investors, find buyers for, for companies, or find sellers, right? Same kind of thing, like you hire a realtor to help you sell your house, or you hire a realtor to help you find a house, and it's the same with investment bankers, right? You hire a banker to help you sell your company, sell part of your company in, in terms of an investment, right? Find investors to invest in your company, and sometimes you even use an investment banker to help you represent your company if someone else is trying to buy you to help you negotiate and get the best possible price. And an IPO is basically an equity financing event, like we said earlier. And so that is something that really good investment banking firms really specialize in and place where they can shine. Your first step working through the IPO process is to engage with accounts and lawyers to make sure that the business is cleaned up and ready for the public markets. Now that oftentimes means that you're gonna use a specialized group like the Connor Group, for example, to come in, look at all of your finances and your accounting, tighten up your systems, make sure everything is ready to go. You also have lawyers come in, they'll make sure all the legal documents are done, the entity structure, contracts, all of that stuff is cleaned up and, and ready for public markets. When that's done, you'll file what is called an S1 and you'll work with your investment banker to create essentially what's an offering document. It does a deep dive into the business, talks about you know what the business model is, what your, your vision for the future is, how the company's performed historically, what your hopes and ambitions are for the future. It also includes a bunch of uh, warnings, you know, that this investment could be risky, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, you'll take this S1, you file it with the SEC, it gets published, and then people can start reading about your business and they can start forming their own decisions and their own perspective on the company. Once that's done, you'll start what's called the roadshow. Now the roadshow is where you're going with your investment bank and it is a flurry of activity over the course of several weeks, maybe months, but usually weeks. You'll hop in a private jet, which sounds super luxurious, but really you're on that private jet because you don't have time to waste. You're just hopping from city to city to meet with investor after investor after investor. You're pitching to big hedge funds and family offices that manage billions of dollars. And you're trying to convince them that, hey, this company is something that's worth investing in. Now, what happens is you'll go and you'll do all these pitches. The investment bankers are gonna be with you, right? They're gonna make, they're gonna facilitate the introductions and kind of tee things up for you. And then after you've done the pitches, they'll go back and they'll be like, hey, what did you think? What did you think of XYZ company? You think it's interesting? Is it something that you would want to invest in? Why or why not? Uh, and they start collecting indications of interest. One of the things that they'll do is they'll start actually collecting prices. So they'll say, hey, okay, so it's something you want to invest in. How much would you invest? And at what price, right? 
they're starting to collect data through that whole process of where the valuation of the business should be, as well as drum up interest for the IPO. All of that leads you up to the night before you go public. Now, if there's been a lot of good response from investors and they're saying, yes, this is really interesting, I really want to invest, et cetera, et cetera, then that's where they start setting price ranges, right? And you'll see that in the in the news, right? Like XYZ company sets the price range between 16 and $20. And as they get more data points, as they meet with more and more of these investors, they'll, they'll start to narrow it down. And the night before the company goes public, the investment bank will actually go to the company and they'll say, okay, based on the level of interest that we've seen from all these other investors, we're gonna give you a price of maybe it's $18 per share. And the investment bank will actually buy those shares from the company. So the company now gets all of that money. Now, typically companies are raising between one and $200 million through an IPO process. So the investment bank is actually gonna give them the one to $200 million. That then goes on their balance sheet. And the next day, they go out, the CEO rings the bell, right? Everybody's excited, whatever. And at that point, there will be a bunch of investors that have essentially committed to buy the shares from the investment bank. And they buy it at a slight premium, typically, from the investment bank. So maybe they're buying them at like $18.25 a share, whatever it might be. The investment bank does not want to be holding uh, a bunch of shares that it can't sell. So it has to have a lot of confidence that it's buying them from the company at a good price that they can sell to somebody else for at least that same price or higher. Those investors get a great deal typically because they're able to buy in at what's a relatively lower price. And that's because the investment bank is incentivized to find a price that's just, just slightly below what market is so that they ensure that they're able to sell all of the shares. Those large institutions that buy in at the IPO typically have special connections with the investment bank, they're big clients, and so they're given kind of the, this extra privilege. Now, a lot of those, in, those investors will immediately sell the shares, right? And this is where you see stocks pop, right? Maybe that went public at $18 a share, but there's enough demand and interest from those that couldn't buy at the IPO price that they're willing to pay 20, 30, 40, dollars, upwards of $40 a share in some cases, right? And that's where you see kind of this pop. Those investors, that, those large institutions that bought from the investment bank, some of them will sell all of their positions, some will sell some of their position and, and recognize a quick flip, and others will hold, it on, hold on to it for the long run. If you're a company, you really, want to, you really want investors that are gonna be long-term investors and not just immediately flip in the IPO, but you do need to have some shares available in the public markets for other investors to buy and sell because that will give you the liquidity that you're really looking for. So as you think about this whole process, the investment bankers, they're gonna get paid fees for, for putting together the S1, they're gonna get paid fees for taking you around and introducing you to different uh, investors and ultimately pulling together that round. They're also gonna make money between the price that they buy those shares from the company and what they sell those shares for to large institutional investors. And then they continue to make money because they're also gonna charge fees every time people wanna come in and buy and sell shares of that stock on their platforms. So those are the major ways that investment bankers make money and the overall IPO process. If you liked this video, check out some of my others like, what is it like to work in private equity?